I do variant cycle. What we're going to do is uh, talk about meiosis with the ovarian cycle. Today is repro physiology uh, for the female sex. There is a picture of the ovary representing a 28-day cycle. And uh, we're going to talk all, all about the follicles again and how they develop and what's going on with the oocyte inside in terms of meiosis. And then we'll get all the way to ovulation, day 14, and talk about what happens after that, okay, in the luteal phase. And um, if you're not pregnant, you know, when a white scar calls corpus allergens. We talked about this before, but not the meiosis part. So if you recall, in the endocrine unit, what I did was I had talked about how um, the follicles first form before birth. You would have, um, let's say, put over here, meiotic events. cells that become eggs, they're not undergoing meiosis, they're undergoing mitosis, not meiosis. You're just dividing and you're trying to increase the number as much as you can because once the follicles form, it stops and that's all the eggs the female can get. Because that happens at around seven, the seventh month of pregnancy. You're going to get the primordial follicles. And once that happens, you arrest my mitosis. Okay? I'll just say no more mitotic divisions. No more eggs. You can't increase the number anymore. And um, most folks will say you got about a couple million, one to two million of these primordial follicles. And they actually start to undergo meiosis, but they're, they're pretty much just arrested in prophase one. They don't really get past that. Phase one arrest. Okay. And then you get to birth. say at birth, maybe we have about one million primordial follicles. And then um, nothing's happening. You're just born, you're not sexually mature yet. You're still in core phase one arrest in terms of um, Now let's 
let's pay attention to what we call the cell. It's a primary oocyte. Okay, that, that's the proper term. Primary means like one because you're in meiosis one. The oocyte is like the egg. And then if you skip from birth to puberty, Pictures. Those pictures are correlated to someone now. Primary oocyte is the rest of the prophase one. And I think it's good that I remind you what, what's in the cell. It's 2NR, right? There's 23 tetrad, those on the quiz somewhere. The ploidy is 2NR, it's diploid replicated, and in the human genome, 23 tetrads. There's pictures of primordial follicles. And um, let's see here. Well, here's a primary follicle. Okay, so if you skip from birth to like puberty, fast forward, average age of puberty is something like 12, 4, 5 years for uh, a young girl. And, well, I mean, you start to get some hormones and you can start to develop the follicles. The next stage of development is primary follicle. However, that's the name of the follicle, not to be confused with the oocyte, which also uses the term primary. Still in prophase order rest. And it's still, I'm not going to rewrite everything, it's still the primary oocyte it's still diploid replicated 23 tetrads. You can rewrite it if you want. Okay, but, but now we're, we're at puberty, and let's say we've reached the time where you're gonna have your first you know, cycle. And what, what I had said before is, you're gonna choose a cohort of like 20 of these, I guess 20 of these, to advance past these immature stages. Choose a cohort, a group of about 20 follicles uh, to mature further. So here's a, a kind of a early secondary follicle. So I say there, and I say, you know, you, you select 20. You're going through your first cycle. You've reached puberty. There's enough to get out of choking to do it. So about 20 follicles for each. secondary follicle stage. And if you look at the uh, slide there, these are some things we learned before about the follicles that, will, that are more mature. They're, they have some structures like pica, zona pellucida, we had talked about before, and I still want you to know that same information. If you've forgotten, uh, secondary follicle has the pica. Those cells, remember, they secrete the androstene diode. to the granulosa cells. I'll put FSH in parentheses because that, that is what is encouraging this. And when it's transferred there, the granulosa cells have the aromatase, which will convert it to estro. Um, and 
case convert it to escrow. When I say it, I'm referring to the address we need dial. Well, we, we learned that before in the entry chapter. That's important to keep in mind for this chapter, too, because that is one of the major sex hormones of the female. So theca. The full name is theca folliculi. Now, also you have this zona pellucida, which is literally like an eggshell around the oocyte. So let's make sure we're looking at what I want you to see here. Here is the primary oocyte, that's the nucleus, and it's still in prophase one arrest. So I'll kind of line it up with secondary follicle. Twenty-three tetrads still call it a primary oocyte. With twenty-three tetrads, don't confuse primary oocyte with secondary follicle. Right. And uh, okay, so we. we well, why do you keep being arrested? You got to finish, don't you? Yeah, well, you have to do it in the right one. And so, you, the goal is to develop 20, because they're secreting the female sex hormones, and you need that. That's the endocrine function. But you only want one to ovulate. You don't want to ovulate 20 eggs and have them all be fertilized. The uterus can only handle one, okay? Maybe you can handle two, there's twins birth weight goes down significantly. And birth weight keeps going down with multiples, and that, that's a concern, because when they're born, you gotta help them out a lot. The uterus is designed for one, okay? So, you want one of these, ideally, to ovulate. So what'll happen is, I'm gonna erase this now. One of those 20 will achieve dominance and proceed to like, like this, like a late secondary. Like, it's like the winner, I win. Maybe it's the one that has the most FSH receptors, you know, the adult faster. There are other factors. Oh, you know, let's remember what FSH is. Follicle stimulating hormone, one of the gonadotropins secreted by the anterior pituitary. Right, you still need that knowledge. Um, okay, so anyways, it's like getting bigger, right? Uh, well, this is the one that will complete Meiosis one, it's going to go on a graphene and ovulate. So, um, so this one follicle will break out of prophase one arrest. So I'm writing the secondary follicle that achieved dominance. Completes meiosis one. Now I, I don't want to review all the stages, but prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. The thing is, in telophase, when you the cells pinch off, it's an unequal division. Something like. cell keeps all the cytoplasm, the one that will be ovulated and fertilized possibly. Okay. This one. Uh, 
the homocyte, call that a polar body. It's the first one, so we'll call it first polar body. Basically, the polar body is a cell that just got the genetic material, no cytoplasm. Okay. And so when you finish, and this kind of breaks off, there's polar body. You know, each of these cells has got the 23 dyads. I can kind of finish this off, just pretend it pinched off. And when you, this is the completion of meiosis one. And was on today's quiz, you know, you're going to start meiosis two. And what's inside the cell? I didn't draw it. I drew, I drew three, but really there's 23 dyads. And it's NR. It's haploid and it's replicated. But once you complete meiosis one, you don't call it primary oocyte anymore. You call it secondary oocyte because it's going to enter meiosis two. Primary oocyte meiosis one. Secondary oocyte meiosis two. So any questions on any of this? You get two cells, a secondary oocyte and a first polar body, which is unimportant, meaningless, it's just garbage. Or I should say that. It's not gonna be fertilized, okay? The goal is reproduction. So in terms of reproduction, yeah, it's, it's garbage. You can't reproduce to the polar body. But we will pay attention to the polar bodies, and you are expected to identify them. I mean, they're a part of the process. I guess I don't want you to forget about it. Uh, so basically, this is the one that's going to reach graphene. Okay. The secondary oocyte gets all the stuff. It's all the cytoplasm. Let me say it is fertilized. It's good that I got all the cytoplasm. The sperm contributes no cytoplasm. It contributes only the genetic material. So you need it all in that cell. Okay. Uh, right, so the graphene follicle, basically, is going to start meiosis 1. I'm oh, sorry, it's going to end with meiosis 1, it's going to start meiosis 2, but you do not want it to finish meiosis 2. Because again, the goal is reproduction. You don't want to finish meiosis 2 unless sperm is present, unless a fertilizing sperm actually gets in. That's what you want to finish. So there's some cellular communication, and it communicates to the cell, the oocyte, to stop. And metaphase 2, you're just kind of arrested in that phase. So I'm writing, start meiosis 2, but do not complete it. You know, basically, I'll put parentheses, wait for sperm to arrive. That's the reason, basically. Waiting for sperm. So you experience, you observe this metaphase two arrest. Sometimes books say adiphase two arrest. The point is you don't finish. They say metaphase two arrest. What's going on with the graphene follicle? And um, at around day 14, this is kind of where we are in the ovarian cycle, ovulation. Ovulation marks the end of the follicular phase. So I'm going to erase follicular development because we're not in that phase anymore. So the follicle phase is the first couple of weeks of the cycle. Ovulation is about day 14. Some books will say day 13 to 15 in the middle.
So for a reproductive unit, for the female side, that is the most important day, the day you ovulate. That's the most important thing you can do, a female can do, to be reproductive, ovulate, achieve that. So that is the day. You know, I give a lot of details. This is the important day. Um, and what are you ovulating? You're ovulating the secondary oocyte. Secondary oocyte, and let's review. We're in metaphase two arrest, so it's NR, right? Metaphase two arrest. Uh, but I'll say it's. I'll, I'll focus on the anatomy here. What's the structure that receives it? Your uterine tube or oviduct. Basically, I wrote it earlier, but that's, where, that's technically where you're, you're waiting for sperm. Um, so when you ovulate, there's a picture of it there. And here's a real picture of it here, too. What you're looking at here, a colleague uh, emailed this around. I thought it was cool. I hadn't, I hadn't seen it before. Here's the fall of the structure. And there's the oocyte or the egg um, rupturing and breaking out. And they happened to, whatever procedure they were doing, they had the ovary exposed right at the moment of ovulation. It takes about a day. There's the egg coming out of there, there's a surgical instrument there. But anyways, it's, it's for real. Okay. It literally busts out of there. And what's left behind is um, a ruptured follicle. People back. So this follicle is now ruptured and it bleeds a little bit. And there's actually a name for that. Corpus um, hemorrhagicum. Just leave it misspelled if it is. And I'm, I'm very lenient if you misspell it because I always do it myself. But what's a hemorrhage mean? It means you're bleeding. So this is a fancy way of saying bleeding body. And it's very important not to ignore it. I mean, the oocyte has kind of left home, so to speak, and um, what's left behind is the ruptured follicle. And Keep track of this. What was the rupture follicle before ovulation? The graphene follicle, right? That housed it. So keep track of all the structures in your head. Sometimes students tend to think everything's different, something new, you know. But I'm following the one follicle that achieved dominance. Went to secondary, went to graphene, now ruptures. Now is a bleeding body. Now will actually become a yellow body. So alpha becomes corpus luteum, which means yellow body. Well, we looked at the corpus luteum. Uh, I took a picture of it last year. I took a, well, I think I took this picture a few years ago. Anyways, there's a picture I took, there's a picture from the book. What you're looking at is a ruptured follicle. It is actually an endocrine structure, and I'll talk about more of its endocrine function later. Um, but at this point, we kind of have to talk about, okay, so you've achieved ovulation. Does fertilization occur or not? Okay, it's, it's one of two things. We have to consider both. If you're not pregnant, and fertilization does not occur. I'll just say not pregnant, no fertilization. 
the, the corpus luteum. Um, and I should also mention, you get ovulation, corpus luteum. Corpus luteum is the structure that symbolizes what's called the luteal phase, the second couple of weeks of a cycle. So it goes, follicular phase, ovulation, luteal phase in the ovarian cycle. And if you're not pregnant, this has about a two week lifespan and becomes a white body corpus albicans. Which means white body, it's white scar. White body, basically scar tissue, fibrotic scar tissue. And so all the time this is happening, just it's just been waiting to no avail. It just remains in metaphase two, never finishes. Never completes meiosis two. All right, just to consider the scenario where fertilization occurs and there's implantation, basically pregnant, uh, well then, what happens there? Okay, well, I'll use a different color. If pregnant, we'll look at better pictures of this uh, later, but uh, we had a, a polar body that had been injected before. That, that was the result of meiosis one. I'll put first PB for a polar body. Okay, remember that was unimportant. You don't fertilize that. You for, you're fertilizing the secondary oocyte. And um, Now you're pulling the sister chromatids apart. You inject another half that will become second polar body. like this, these single chromosomes you want to intermix with the sperm genetic material. Here's Mr. Fertilizing Sperm, which kind of busted in the joint. Little sperm tail. Remember, the sperm only contributes the DNA. hard to believe about all those millions of sperm in the ejaculate, it's really only one. Okay, it's like winning the lottery. This guy won, he contributes. These are going to intermix. So basically what you're having here, you're, you're completing meiosis two. Now there's a lot of details in fertilization I am not talking about. The general idea is this. If you're pregnant, you complete premises too. And look at what you're generating. A second polar body. Let's, let's, let's pretend it finishes. You know, that first polar body, again, unimportant in terms of repro, that may undergo a division, okay? Because you're going to see this when you study, and you're like, well, he didn't say that. I guess I better see it.
So you get two polar bodies from the first polar bodies. So how many polar bodies you got? You got three polar bodies. You do have a fourth, a fertilized cell. But in terms of polar body, three. One's called second. The other two came from the first. So the terms that are used. So that, that, that's it. That, that's the end there. So any questions on finishing meiosis two, pregnant or not? Okay. So what I would do, what I just went through was kind of a, this is what I went through. Okay. First part of the lecture today. We go back to. Uh, my, my intent is you go back, you study your notes, which is more complete than this table, and use this to kind of like recalculate everything that we have talked about. Make sure it makes sense to you. Now you understand this week, I think. If you understand uh, this morning's lecture, you know, primordial follicle. Okay, oh, oogonium, yeah, it undergoes mitosis, right? And this is before birth, I said that too. And it's like, oh, there is differences between me and your book. One difference is I say 2NR because it's diploid replicated. They don't, and I don't like that. You just say 2N, okay? So note that. It's 2NR for you, okay? Now we get to um, infancy and childhood, right? Basically, nothing happening. You're arrested prophase one, okay? You got primordial follicles present at birth. But then, each month, from puberty to menopause, you get your cycle. You choose about how many? 20. But how many will be reached dominance and ovulate? One. No. The other 19 aren't the waste. They were secreting estrogen, right, for the um, mixed female and female. They have the endocrine function, so they were not useless. Uh, primary oocyte still arrested in prophase one, doing nothing. But as you get more mature, secondary graphene, oh look, they say they say spindle because it's like you're gonna finish meiosis one. So remember, this is the one that achieves dominance of the twenty. Okay, you, basically I did this. You get a, a polar body, you get a secondary oocyte arrested in meta phase two, and, you know, went through the whole thing, ovulation. And then if you're pregnant, the yellow body never becomes a white body. And what happens is sperm arrives and you complete meiosis two. And they put N, 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 and that is correct. Maybe I should do that too. The N stands for one set of homologous chromosomes. It's half one. So it's like using red, that's N, that's N, that, okay, this is the important N, this N here, because that's the set that's gonna combine with the donated set by the sperm. So it's like you got N plus N, which will become 2N, conception, new, new human. N plus N, and it is the miracle of life, one cell. All right, so that describes meiosis with the ovarian cycle. What I haven't done is mentioned how that's important in terms of ovarian uterine cycle. Those two have to match. We're talking about two things, ovary, uterus. They have to be in sync. If they're not, reproduction is not feasible. Okay? If you ovulate, but that endometrium isn't thickened into a secretory mucosa, even if it implants, you're just going to lose it. Okay, so things have to align. And I want to emphasize now more the hormones. Okay. There's some review questions. Let me answer them quickly now. These are more design forms after you go home, review, do a check for your own understanding. Look at these. Let's shoot off the answers now. The oogenesis, how many chromosomes are the daughter cells after the completion? of meiosis one. It was actually, um, I think that was on today's quiz, it was basically 23 dyads, N, R, haploid replicated. That's how This <coughs> stage of follicular development, does a primary oocyte become 
secondary, at which stage of follicle development does a primary become secondary? Remember, that's the one that achieves dominance. Okay. Um, that one will complete meiosis one, right? So it's the one that became late secondary to graphene. That's kind of when it happens, the completion of meiosis one, where a primary becomes a secondary oocyte. In terms of the anatomy, it will be ovulated, the secondary oocyte, into what structure? <coughs> Uterine tubercle. Oh, here's basic. Oh, yeah, question. For the first part, then you'll say graphene uh, follicle? Yeah. Number three, anaphase one, that's being pulled apart. This was, um, yeah, I did ask you this earlier. Anaphase one, you're pulling apart from all these chromosomes. What about anaphase two? Sister chromatins. When does meiosis two complete? Well, it doesn't always complete, right? I give you a hint. Well, before or after ovulation. After, right? It's ovulated, waits at the bus stop, you know, well, uterine tube. It's just waiting. Because what must arrive? Sperm. Sperm. Right? That, that was easy. Yeah. What anatomical structure does, does this happen? Do you already answer that? No, we don't. Now, specifically, the ampulla of the uterine tube is the typical sign of fertilization most often. Okay. Well, kind of marry the ovarian cycle with the uterine cycle, there's this figure, it's very useful, and um, let's understand what we're looking at here. Maybe we're going to put a star next to your notes. What I'm going to lecture on now is the written portion of your test. Right? So I'm not going to put an announcement on cannabis, I just told you. And what do you have to know? Well. You have to know about the, the gonadotropin releasing hormone, how they control the release of FSHLH from an inferior pituitary. You gotta know the ovarian cycle that we just talked about, we'll hash it again. And um, now we're gonna emphasize the hormones and how they develop the, the endometrium, the functional <coughs> okay, all in an effort for reproduction. So since there are, are key places in the body where, that are interacting with each other, I would say there's three things to keep track of. Well, it's really more for me to keep track of. I'm, I'm doing the presentation now. Let me erase this. This is a cycle. How many days? 28. Do you see that on the figure? It's on the bottom. It's a very small font. You can't see it sitting in the back. 1, 28. Other things to note. Do you see the color code here? Light green, light blue, darker blue. Okay, so that helps too. It's referring to, you know, menses, follicular, or luteal phases. Do you see ovulation in the middle? Ovulation in the middle, that arrow there. Um, okay, so that, that's kind of what we're looking at. So when I discuss this, I usually discuss what's happening in the hypothalamus at pit. So I'll put HYP slash at pit, because those hormones are crucial. In the middle of the board, I'll put the ovary. Uh, it secretes different things, sex hormones, estrogen or progesterone, and they help develop the uterus, the endometrium. So all three of those things need to be considered. And what's important about, uh, well, like for example, when you're writing about this, that you understand how the hormones cause everything and how the hormones feed back this or that. I want to go through it all. But it's all about the hormones driving this. I'm shifting away from meiosis. I want you to understand the hormone physiology. Okay? 
That's the key. Um, like for example, a good say B minus C plus student, you know, for this essay question, they're really good at memorizing the steps, but they don't mention the hormones. Okay, and that's where you lose points usually. Uh, the best essays that the student understood how the hormones <coughs> worked everything out. It's all about the hormones, and I can't emphasize that anymore. Uh, so when you discuss a cycle, you can start anywhere, because you're going to get to where you're, you're going to cycle back to where you began. And I like to start at day 28, uh, because that's the first day of menses, and you weren't pregnant, right? That's where I like to start, day 28 to 5, menses. Remember, the word menses means month. Right? This thing that happens about the first five days. And the thing to notice is that the, the reason why it happened is the, the female hormone levels crashed. Estrogen, progesterone, those levels are low. There's no sex hormones to main, maintain the endometrium. The spiral arteries in the previously <coughs> thickened endometrium, they spasm. The tissue basically then sloughs off. Right? That, that's so basically you have <coughs> low levels of, I'll just put EST slash progesterone, PROG as an abbreviation. That is what causes spiral arteries, <coughs> spasm, menses curves. simply when the, the endometrium is, is sloughed off. What is not sloughed off is the stratum basalis. And you build on top of that for the next one. So this is days 28 to 5. Okay. And if you go to the first, first five days here of a new cycle, right here, uh, that, that's still in menses. Now the thing that is happening is estrogen and progesterone, they're, um, they have ne negative feedback on hypothalamus and pit. So when those levels crash, you remove the inhibition on gonadotropin releasing hormone. So low estrogen, progesterone, Remove remove inhibition on GNRH. What does that do? Right. You're going to start to get levels of, get rising levels of FSH. Well, LH, not, LH not so much. I'm just going to like put the focus on FSH. Follicle stimulating hormone. Now follow, follow along here. I want you to see that rise of FSH on the figure. FSH is the red line. See how it goes up right there during menses? Mm, that, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So what does that do? It, it targets follicular development in the ovary. Choose how many to develop? Well, 20. 21. Well, gee, that So you go through your stages. You're at primordial. We call this the, the follicle phase, right? Of the ovarian cycle. Put 
put that in quotes. It's kind of in every book. You go from primordial to primary, comes out to primary, you get secondary, and they kind of show that right around there. See, now you're getting into the dark blue category. So now we're kind of at a mensis. We're into the follicle phase with the rise of FSH and the follicle development. Something like days 5 to 13, let's say. In this follicle phase. I'll put D5 to 13. Just so you know where we are in the cycle. We were at day 28.5. We're proceeding to day 5.13. Primary will go to secondary. And when you're mature enough, you have structures like FECA. The other structure um, that I showed you previously, I forgot to talk about it, the zona pellucida. That was on um, the slide earlier, I forgot to mention it. But that's also a feature that you see. That, that's important. It, it's basically an eggshell around the oocyte. And what I'll say about it now is there are these ZP proteins, one to four. I'll just put ZP one to four. They have proteins that interact with sperm. So they're important for fertilization. Okay, when I talk about fertilization in a future lecture, that will come back to us. I just want to note it for now. The thing about the secondary is that thing I wrote earlier, uh, how you get estrogen secreted, right? That whole thing, that happens now. The androstene diode is converted to estro. I'll write it on the bottom here. I'll put arrow, estro at the very bottom of the board here. The conversion is due to a very important enzyme, aromatase. Still want you to know that for this part of the lecture. ZP. Oh, day one, two, four. No, the proteins have numbers. There's ZP one, two, three, and four. Oh, got it. Yeah. ZP three is really important because it's species specific. So only a human sperm can fertilize a human egg. That way, pig sperm can't fertilize human egg. talking about day 5 to 13. So look at that time and look where estrogen is. This little yellowish line. See that rise right there? Day 5 to 13. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So what that does is it's going to help rebuild the endometrium that we call that proliferative phase. Erase this here. <coughs> Done with menses. We are Rebuild. I want to draw an arrow from estro to here. I want to put causes the proliferative phase in the uterine cycle. Proliferative phase. Okay. And what are some details of that that I expect you to know? Some we've already talked about. I mean, you think of the endometrium, but more importantly, you're going to increase. You're going to proliferate spiral arteries and uterine glands. Increase spiral arteries, uterine glands. You need the 
blood and the glandular secretion to support implantation if one occurs later. <coughs> yeah, ready for pregnancy. Okay, the other thing that happens is, uh, well, just think for a minute, are we pre or post ovulation? Are we before or after ovulation? We're before. Day 5 to 13. We're starting the proliferative phase. Look where proliferative phase is. We're right here. Where's ovulation? A few days later. So we want to let sperm in. Okay. And the other thing that happens is there's a mucus plug at the cervix that dissolves. The major hormone is estrogen right now. Let's, let's fast forward and give ourselves a preview. What's the major hormone <coughs> in the green part here? Progesterone. Progesterone. So you want to kind of get ready for that. You want to prime for it. During this time in the endometrium, you increase the number of progesterone receptors. Increase progesterone. Basically, the body is telling your brain, okay, we've got our 20. We want to have one ovulation. We don't want to have multiple ovulations. So let, let's stop developing follicles. We have our 20. Well, we're good, basically. So negative feedback. That's important. Estrogens, negatively feedback. And I want you to see that on the figure as you're setting it. You see how you have these like larger follicles, and then that correlates with this down, the FSH going down and turning it off. Okay? Well, that's the other thing that happens. Well, I'm, I'm going to erase the board. Is there any questions before I do that? Yeah? So the proliferative phase, that also happens at the same time. Yeah. So basically, the dark blue down here, yeah, 513, we'll go with that. Okay, erases. Okay, uh, so where we left off is uh, secondaries, you get a lot of uh, estrogen. But, you know, one will achieve dominance. Let's get to that part. Largest follicle. Um, well, we study its features and endocrine. Basically, you're, you're going to get more estrogens, even more. I'll put up two up arrows. Okay. And the graphene follicle. We're, we're getting close to ovulation, but we're not quite there yet. This is when the graphene. Okay, we're still within the follicle phase, within days five to fifteen. 
by the 13, closer to 13. And we're all just almost there. Remember, day 14 is the day. It's like the most important day for the ovary. Uh, well, anyways, the estrogens continue to reinforce the proliferative phase. That just continues. I'll just put continues. Continues to progress. Proliferative phase. We're still within that 5 to 13 range. And the thing about it is, estrogens, a small rise turned off FSH. A large rise actually has the reverse effect. It has a positive feedback, not a negative feedback. It basically turns on the other gonadotropin, LH. We call it the LH surge. LH is surging right before ovulation. We just put LH surge. It surges. And um, it, it's basically the spike. Now, the thing about a spike is it has two sides, right? To be a spike. I'm talking about the side where it goes up. That's the increase, that's the LH surge. Or L, you turn it on, and the LH levels are low, but then it surges when you turn it off. Now, what that, what that surge does, it's going to um, trigger ovulation. So I'll draw an arrow going back to ovary, triggers ovulation. And that marks the end of the follicle phase. So we're right around day 14 now. Ovulation, no more follicle phase. So when you ovulate, you're left with a bleeding body. That's my shorthand for secondary. What I'm writing is secondary O, so I ovulated two oviduct or uterine tube. And what's left behind is a, a corpus hemorrhagicum. So the graphene follicle is, is ruptured, becomes corpus hemorrhagicum. So I'll put an arrow from graphene follicle, becomes a bleeding body. Corpus Hemoragicum. I think there is an H in there. Hemoragicum. It's a it's a hemorrhaging thing. But the beauty of LH, not only does it trigger the ovulation, it transforms the corpus hemoragicum to corpus luteum. So I'm going to draw an arrow from LH surge. Draw another one. I'm going to put transforms. Define the arrow, corpus hemorrhagicum, uh, corpus media. It's all hormone driven. LH, FSH, they're gonadotropins. This is what they're doing. Corpus luteum basically gets you to the luteal phase after day 14. Any questions before I raise the board? That's yeah. if ovulation doesn't occur, right? This is if ovulation occurs. Why would it be bleeding the body? That's what I'm confused. Because when the uh, oocyte busts out of the follicle, it makes it bleed. If I rip something out of your body, you're going to bleed. Well, right? yeah, because I thought, I thought the reason there's menses of bleeding is because of the 
Yeah, yeah, this is a different bleeding. That's a bleeding of the endometrium. Okay. This is inside the ovary. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Or I saw another one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. LH does two things. Number one, triggers ovulation. Then it acts on that ruptured follicle, corpus hemorrhagnum, and transforms it to corpus luteum. Okay. There's a thing to keep track of. Maybe a little confusing because there's a lot of things here. There's one follicle that achieved dominance, right? Remember what a graph the follicle is? It's a big follicle with the oocyte in it. You let it go. The oocyte's gone in ovulation. And what's left behind? A follicle that bleeds. So graphene became corpus hemorrhagium, and then LH acted on it and becomes corpus luteum. So it's all the same thing. So let's look where we are in the cycle. We're at day 14, <clears throat> and now we have our corpus luteum. So now we're in the luteal phase. Call it day 15 to 27. This is. Corpus luteum, that's where we are. We're, we're in the luteal phase. Call it day 15 to 27 ish. Something like that. The second couple of weeks of this cycle. Now, corpus luteum is yellow. There's cholesterol. It's making progesterone, it's secreting progesterone. That's its job. I got one thing to do. Progesterone. Okay, so what progesterone does, it, its main job is to target the endometrium and bring about the secretory phase. Causes secretory phase. Again, second couple of weeks. And the secretory phase. I mean, this, you have this thickened endometrium, and it basically becomes a secretory mucosa. Okay. If fertilization occurred, what day did it occur on? 14. So we're past that now. Okay. So it's like if there was an implantation happening, it's happening around now. You, you want a private uterus, so you reform the mucus plug at cervix. now, if fertilization occurred, it occurred at day 14, but it hangs out for about a week in the uterine tube before it's allowed entrance into the uterus, or implantation might occur a week later. So a week later is about day 21, right in the peak of this part, okay? Uh, all right, so progesterone does this job here. It has a powerful negative feedback on LH, on the hypothalamus hypo, um, pit. I'm writing powerful negative Anyways, I 
through the other side of the spike, right? So the negative feedback is the other side of the spike. It goes down, right? So the corpus luteum, its job is to secrete the progesterone, which turns off LH. So it's kind of like committing suicide a little bit. Because LH is the thing that gave it life, not turning it off. No LH? The corpus luteum has about a two week lifespan and will, will die if you're not pregnant. Right? Let's, let's do that scenario first. No LH. So you see it dying at around, well, right here, day 27 ish. Let me put it right there, right? Corpus luteum dies, becomes a white scar. Corpus albicans. So it's a fibrotic white scar. Basically, now there's going to be no sex hormones, no, no progesterone, no estrogen. I shouldn't say no, I should say low, but it doesn't matter. I think you get the, the concept. Low or no. Low. We're back where we started from. That's kind of where I started talking about this stuff. Those hormone levels crash. Cosmensis, day 28. done, I have to talk about if pregnancy occurs, because that's the whole point of this unit, reproduction. So, uh, I'm going to raise this to the bottom part here, okay? Menses cannot, I mean, you're not pregnant if you have menses. If you had an implantation, you have menses, it's gone. There's some um, drugs, pharmaceuticals, that are kind of controversial. Um, that a woman doesn't want to be pregnant, she takes it, and they block progesterone receptors, so you have menses. So it allows for fertilization, and implantation is prevented. Okay? That, that's one class of uh, contraceptives. Allow fertilization, but you don't allow implantation. There's kinds of contraceptives that don't allow fertilization, like the pill, right? Progestins. You just orally take it. You don't even allow ovulation. If there's no ovulation, can you have fertilization? No. no. So, yeah, that prevents that. Of course, there's another category of um, contraceptives. It's behavior. You just don't have sex. Have abstinence. That's a category. Okay. But you don't have to know that because this unit is reproduction. That's what we're talking about. Uh, contraception. All right, so, you know, this is kind of, let's say you are pregnant. You don't want the corpus luteum to die. Let me erase that one, too. Okay, again, if you got pregnant, what day did it occur on? Around 14. And if that happened, and implantation occurred at around day 21-ish. Maybe implantation occurs at day 21, around there, about a week later after fertilization. Uh, by, by about then in development, there's a structure called the blastocyst, and um, we'll get into the details. For now, I'll just put the most essential thing, that there are these things called trophoblast cells in, in the new baby, what, what will be the new embryo. Uh, these trophoblast cells secrete a hormone called HCG.
So this is co be coming from the, the new baby that's implanting, will be the new embryo. Okay, so call trophoblast cells, think of it from the, the pre-embryo. The baby, the pregnancy. They secrete a hormone called HCG. HCG stands for human chorionic gonadotropin. It's the same thing that they detect in home pregnancy tests. Because if you have that, you are pregnant. You know, like you're in denial, maybe you don't want to be, but maybe you want to be, doesn't matter. What is that hormone coming from? The baby. It's accurate, okay? Then you do it yourself, you don't believe it. You go to the doctor, you have them do it. And, uh, you can believe them. That is replacing, this is like a sub. Get out the bench, you're in the game. What's it doing? What's it, what is this replacing? That, there's no LH. What did LH do? It sustained the corpus luteum, it gave it life. You want the corpus luteum to remain. So, because if it dies, you have menses. So, you want to keep it alive. HCG maintains corpus luteum. And as long as corpus luteum is alive, it'll continue to secrete progesterone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arrow from my blue progesterone to here. I'll just say maintain endometrium miss menses. You don't need to be a student of physiology to know what that means. It means you're pregnant. Everyone knows this, whether you've heard this lecture or not. Okay, any questions on the pregnancy uh, pathway? Okay, I think what's important is um, basically done on a recap here. Uh, this one emphasizes the feedbacks because I feel like when students write about this, that's kind of what you forget. It's easy to forget that because there's so many details. But this kind of sums it up for you. Um, this is a developing, more mature follicle. Slightly elevated estrogen. Okay, basically, positive feedback, you get uh, more FSH, okay? And that's kind of what they're doing there. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I just messed up, I said it wrong. The dotted line is inhibition. It can get slightly elevated estrogen. That turns it off, 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 off. Let me correct myself. I'm getting tired, we need a break. All right, here's the other two. That's the first one. Slightly elevated estrogen, turn it off. Okay, that's number one. Number two. Now, we get a bigger one. More estrogen is positive feedback. That turns it on. That's LH surge. Okay, that was the second one. Number three, corpus luteum secretes progesterone. That was a powerful negative feedback. Again, that turns it off. Okay. So the first one was a switch off, turn off the FSH. The second one was a switch on, turn on the LH. The third one, if you did more progesterone, is a switch off. Still on the board, turn off the FSH, turn off the LH. In terms of um, what we have in the lab for you, we have a purple board, and I took different pictures of it and put part of it here, and it's on your lab study guide. It's one of the pages. I just took a picture of the whole board and I keyed it out for you. This is showing you 
28 days. You see follicular development here. I'm going to have to identify some of these things. Primordial, primary, skip secondary. That's graphia. And that clearly is ovulation. You can see the oocyte is a little bit out of frame there. Okay. Yeah, that uh, is the corpus luteum. You have a little blood in there. But that's the corpus luteum. That secretes progesterone. It's got to get into the blood. That's why they put a little puddle of blood there. But that's corpus luteum. What's G? Corpus albicans. So that's 28 days of that. And what I like about this figure is, this board is, they show you the different phases. And uh, I put menses, but I shouldn't have to. There are the days, 28.5. So that's, um, you're sloughing it off. Here's the uh, proliferative phase, okay? Pay attention to the ovary when you study this board. See that? They show a follicle phase inside there, during proliferative phase. This is 5.13. Here's 13 to 15, ovulation, and they show it there. Okay. So if you're not looking for the details, you miss a lot. And when I test you on different things on this board, you may miss it. If you conceive, it's on this day. If you fertilize, it's on this day. They do show that. Right? So study that. They even show it in planting around there. Here's secretory phase. Uh, they just put a 21. Okay, that's fine, that's within the ballpark. And yeah. Here's some review questions. We'll um, look at those later. Let's take a break. Now when we come back, we're gonna have our meiosis lab. So meiosis lab when we come back in break. Fifteen minutes.